Recently, our video's updating speed is getting faster and faster, but it rather exposes the serious problems in data management, such as the storing clips on a bunch of removable hard disks without backups, using more than three kinds of editing software at the same time. The performance of the NAS for storing the clips is only adequate, which leads to a lot of repetitive communication while we work, searching for the clips or because of the poor stability of the link. The work is often interrupted. It's a terrible thing to work on, but uh, we've been able to use it for so long. It's uh, amazing, isn't it? But ZLab doesn't see this as a good situation, so they sent us the uh, ZLab AI NAS to help us uh, solve these problems once and for all. Now, let's see what ZLab can really deliver. The ZLab D6 that we got is one of the early samples that are under development. Instead of the usual x86 embedded SoC, it is equipped with an octa-core ARM architecture RK3588 processor to run the whole system. While there may be some uh, concerns about the uh, outdated performance of this uh, three-year-old SoC, but it will bring a higher energy efficiency ratio, which is good news for a device that needs to work 24-7 non-stop. And our subsequent performance tests have further confirmed that uh, it is uh, fully capable of meeting the transmission needs of a 2.5 GPPS network port, and is not as vulnerable as you might think. If you want higher transfer speed and capacity, take a look at the D6 Ultra or the D8 Ultra, both of which have two 10 GBE RJ45 ports, two 40 GBPS USB ports, and they've upgraded their processor to the Intel Ultra 5 125H, which delivers 34 tops of performance in order to handle the higher transfer demands. If you think Ultra's performance isn't enough, you can even use the SFF8654 connector on the back of the Ultra to connect to a high-performance GPU or a 100 GPUs network card. The ZLab D6 comes with 32 gigs of built-in eMMC storage and 16 gigs of LPDDR4X RAM. Although this configuration does not sound very high, but his I/O configuration I personally find very sincere. For example, on the front panel, there are three SD card slots, two of which still support UHS, the second generation. Theoretically, the read speed can reach 312 MB per second. We use an SD card that has a read speed of 280 MB per second to test. We found that it could reach a speed of almost 172 MB per second. The USB and the USB-C next to the card slot also offer the very good rates, both at 5 GPS. There are the 6 3.5 drive bays, all labeled accordingly, corresponding to the screen on the lower right. The hard drive cages have a screw-free design, so you can put the drives on very quickly. But if you need to install a 2.5-inch hard drive, such as the most common SSDs, it will be a bit complicated. You will need to remove the car pad in the upper right corner and use the four screws to secure it on. There's also a Gen 3 X1 M2 port at the bottom of the machine. It's not a full X4 spec, but it's enough for this little 2.5G network port. The ZLab ANS is designed with a simple geometric shapes and smooth lines without too many complicated decorations, showing a simple aesthetic of a modern technology products that can fit well into various office or home environments. Colors are more classic and versatile, giving a calm, stylish look suitable for different uses. The hard drive cage is made of anodized aluminum, which is not only delicate to the touch and not easy to track fingerprints, but also has excellent heat dissipation and protection performance. It not only elevates the look, but also good for practicality. The edges of the products are made well, with no obvious burrs or unevenness, and the seams between the components are also very tight. The only exception is the translucent bottom bracket, but I won't criticize this as it is simple, sure it will be fixed in mass production. On the front panel, there's a roughly 3.49 inch LCD screen that gives you a visual overview of the device's web UI management address, CPU usage, and RAM usage, as well as a hard drive usage. It also offers a variety of commonly used ports, such as two SD card slots, a TFT card slot, USB A, USB C on the front panel, HDMI 2.0, two USB A, a 2.5G LAN port, and a Gigabyte LAN port on the back which can meet different connectivity needs. In order to ensure the stability of the device in long-term operation, there are also components for heat dissipation. Equipped with the two 9cm stand size fans on the back, it helps air circulation and reduces the temperature of the hard disk, while the CPU is covered by a huge heat sink. In our testing, with the fan strategy set to silent mode, the temperature of all the hard disks were kept to a low level. 
The ZLab D6 comes with pre-installed with a Debian-based ZOS and AI NAS system. After booting up the system, you can usually tap a ZLab.local into your browser and you will be able to quickly access the ZLab D6 web UI management interface or you can access the web UI through the IP address displayed on the small screen. Through this intuitive graphical interface, you can easily complete the initialization of the system. The first thing you need to do is to create a storage pool and ZLab is thoughtful enough to provide a shortcut link underneath the uh, search box at the top to let you create a pool quickly. In a pool's policy, ZLab recommends different storage models based on the number of hard disks you have put in. And if you're not sure which one you want to use, try clicking on the mode you want to use to see the pros and cons. And at the bottom, you can also see how much storage you will get when you create the pool. But if you're careful enough, you will notice that when you create a pool in the current version of the system, ZLab defaults a 100 gigs of storage on each hard disk, which is the amount of space reserved for AI models. So if you are plugging in a 128 gigs SSD, it will have very little available capacity. The good news though, ZLab will optimize this before the official launch. Of course, for the security of the machine, it's not recommended to use the administrator account directly as the account password for SMB sharing when using the NAS, so we still need to create an account to use it. Here, ZOS offers two ways. The first one is very traditional, tap settings, find user management, new user. The second way is very, very easy. All you need to do is to send a message to ZAI, I need a user account dedicated to accessing the data. ZAI will throw you a form, and when you fill out the form and click submit, you will get your new account. But I'm more excited to see if these AI features can help video creators. For example, this very useful auto task feature before you use it for the first time, you need to set up the data source and where to store the data in Autotask in CoCard. Slide down and click Create and you are ready to go. But don't click Create just yet. If you try to check out these detailed features, you will see that ZLab has clearly thought through quite a few details. Things like a file validation, file filtering, automatic USB ejection, and even the ability to make an extra copy of data to store on another NAS or cloud storage. What also surprised me was the uh, transcription feature. You can just tap on the video and in the information bar on the right, there's a 50 word summary to help you understand what's going on in the clip. If that's too short for you, swipe down to even see the subtitles and you can export them directly for use in other programs. According to our test, its recognition rates as well as its accuracy is even more accurate than uh, DaVinci's transcription feature, which basically brings it close to the uh, experience of CapeCut which comes with a fee. ZLab's AI search function compared to ordinary NAS is more like using DeepSeq and ZLab is its uh, database. For example, if I want to know what are the uh, characteristics of the SM2320, ZLab AI will immediately find your specs stored in D6, analyze and understand it and summarize it for you. If your material is as confusing as it was when we first imported it into ZLab and you're looking for a photo of a cat taken last year into the search bar and it will immediately show up. ZLab even offers free external link sharing with no limitations. The speed limit is basically limited by your broadband upload bandwidth and the storage space depends on how big of a hard drive you can fit in there. When you get your hands on it, the little guy isn't going to make you pay for an expensive subscription in the long run like a Google Workspace or Backplace B2. Instead, just pay a little bit for the electricity bill per month, you will get a pretty close experience. The fundamental difference in AI for ZLab compared to other NAS devices is its deep integration of local big models and natural language processing technology, enabling smarter and more efficient data management and interaction. Basically, you only need to do a lot of uh, pre-setup work under one window. Not just changing system settings, but even installing Jellyfin can be done without checking out all that complicated documentation. Just click Install. For content creators, these AI features can undoubtedly be very useful. It's more like a working assistant in general, always handing you what you need when it's time to show up. Now we come to the boring testing part. First, we ran a network bandwidth test on ZLab using the in-store open speed test and ZLab ended up being able to upload and download at 2500 Mbps. Hooked up to an SMB share on the Windows, it also gets good results. We put editing project to work on ZLab and surprisingly, the experience of working on the clips was almost the same as on a local disk. 
However, when we put the project on a Z Labs Ray Defy HDD array, the preview experience of the clips becomes terrible due to the HDD's poor responsiveness. In the test of file transfer, an interesting thing appeared. When copying files from NAS, the speed is stable at 250 MP per second, but when copying files to NAS, the write speed fluctuates, which looks like a problem with the uh, caching mechanism, while the read operation instead of performs more stable and fast. After talking with the Z Lab, they made it clear that this is due to the current data transfer method and transfer protocol optimization issues, which will be fixed by an OTA update. So overall, the Z Lab AI NAS is a great product that combines design, performance, and functionality. Although there are still many features that are not yet available when we made this video, from the features that have been implemented so far, Z Lab shows a precise product positioning an intelligent storage solution for digital content creators and small studios. Through ZAI natural language interaction, the threshold of using NAS is greatly reduced, and with the expandable M.2 cache slot and UHS the second gen high-speed card reader array, it truly elevates the workflow for content creators. If you want to know more about this device, there's a link down below. This is Wolfgang from China. See you next time.